Hello everyone, welcome to Game and Unboxing. Few days ago, PS Vita just turned 5 years old. The system was first released in Japan on December 17th, 2011, and of course for North America it was released in earlier 2012. Cannot believe it has already been 5 years. So I was thinking to use this chance to do a PS Vita buying guide. Kind of show you what models are available. Also compare the difference between each model. And in the end of the video, I will pick up top 5 Vita games that the PS Vita owner must play. So now let's get it started. There are totally two major different models for PS Vita. The first one is PCH1000 and the second one is PCH2000. However, for PCH1000, there are also two different models for it. The one I have here is called 3G Wi-Fi model, which is the first model they release. And if you see here, you can actually put a 3G SIM card into it. Since this is a very useless feature, later on they release another one which looks exactly the same, but they remove this feature. And because of this feature, 3G Wi-Fi model is actually the heaviest in the whole Vita family. Few years later, they released this PCH2000, which also known as PS Vita Slim. You can kind of see it's way a lot thinner and uh, a lot lighter. Now let's do a little bit of comparison between each model. PS Vita Slim is actually a cost down model. You can kind of see they made it by mainly plastic compared with the original one. It's, it feels a lot better here. Also, the screen is downgraded from OLED to LCD. Some people consider OLED looks better than LCD, and I would say, yeah, there are some difference, but the difference is not that really huge. It's not like from black and white to color. So I don't think this should be an issue. However, Sony still added some improvements into the PS Vita Slim. The battery life of PS Vita Slim is longer, which is very important for a handheld system. Also, they can improve those three buttons here. The original three buttons are very hard to press, but for the Slim, it's way a lot easier, which is a huge improvement. Also, they kind of change the charge cable to micro USB. I mean, this is way more common. You probably have Android phone use this too. If you lost your cable, you can kind of simply find a replacement. And the, for the original Vita, they actually use this very special connector, which if you lost it, I mean, you can still buy it like those replacement from like uh, eBay, very cheap. But I will say those third-party one does not work as well as the original one. So it's kind of annoying if you kind of lost it. Now it comes to a question. If you are looking to get a PS Vita right now, which model you should buy? Each model has its pro and cons. However, I will strongly suggest you get a PS Vita Slim right now. Even though it's a custom model, the screen is downgrade, but just like I said before, it should not be a huge issue. PS Vita Slim has better battery life. It comes with internal 1GB memory. And the most important thing this one is newer. If each device has its own lifespan, PS Vita Slim should last longer if you take good care. So I will suggest you get a Slim. There is also another option you can choose, which is PS TV, also known as PS Vita TV in Japan. This is a device you can hook with your TV and play some of your Vita game. But you need to keep in mind they do not support all the Vita games, so make sure the game you really want to play is supported by PS TV. Now it comes to another question where you can buy the system right now. Unfortunately, PS TV is officially discontinued in the end of 2015. And for PS Vita, even though Sony never has any announcement regard to discontinuation, 
but in North America it's actually discontinued. You will not be able to find any new device in any major retailer. Most of the major retailers get rid of their inventory in early 2016. I think the last major retailer still sell a uh, new Vita is GameStop. But a week after I bought my Slim from there, uh, they sold out their inventory already. Now your only option is go to the third party sellers online. And uh, from what I see in the last 5 to 6 months, the price is going up from like 160 to 200 now. And the price will keep going up. So your option right now is actually either get a pre owned or you import a new one from Japan since they still release a new color or a new bundle. So that's another option you can get a, a new PS Vita. And for pre owned, I think GameStop still sell it. You can check there. But what the funny is, even though PS TV is discontinued, but you still can find this thing in a lot of major retailers in North America, either in store or online. So if the game you are looking to play is supported by PS TV, you might as well just get a PS TV instead. It's actually cheaper also. Now I want to talk about PS Vita's accessories. It's not that many we can talk about, but there are a few things I want to mention here. First, and its most important one, is the memory card. So PS Vita uses its own spatial memory, and it's freaking expensive. And you actually need one of these in order to play. Even though the slim model comes with 1GB internal memory, but that is not enough. Just a few DLC or update, then you will run out of space. So when you get a PS Vita, make sure you get one of these. I will say 8GB should be enough. You also can get a 4GB, 8GB, 16, 32, and to 64. And it's kind of hard to get it right now, so your only option is to buy from internet. This is a official PS Vita portable charger. However, this thing only works with the 1000 model and why is because you need to have this cable to charge so you need to plug this to charge your portable battery and then once you charge this then you can use it with any device like your slim model or your phone the problem is this charger does not work with the third party cable like for this one I cannot use this third party one to charge this charger. So it's kind of annoying if my original one is broken, then this one is pretty much useless. So I would not suggest you to get this one, no matter how cheap it is. And the last accessory I want to cover is the pouch. So I actually have another one here, which is the one that comes with a Persona Dancing All Night, which many games actually come with like a, those pouch. I normally don't use it, I mainly collect those one. And the one I use, I bought for the PCH1000, it's this. This is actually the first party, the Sony PS Vita pouch. And you can get any one from like third party, different kind. I just personally prefer the first party one, and it works pretty well. So that's it for the accessories, so let's talk about the games. Before we look into top 5 must play PS Vita games, I want to talk about where you can buy PS Vita game right now because most major retailer doesn't sell this in store. I think if we want to buy the Vita game in store, the only place you can find it is probably GameStop. And for other retailer like Best Buy, Target, I do not even see a Vita session exist anymore. I guess the best place you can buy is actually online. And I think Amazon has the best inventory. You still can find a lot of old game from there with a pretty reasonable price. Also for newer game, I'm pretty sure most major retailers still sell it on their website, so you can go from there. Now let's look into top 5 must play Vita games. Before we start, a couple things I want to mention. First, the game I pick that must has physical release and you can buy from like a major retailer. Also, the game must be PS Vita exclusive which means you will not see Gravity Rush in this since they release on PS4 later. Also, you will not see same reason you will not see Danganronpa since they are going to be released on PS4. So now let's get a start. 
Number 5 on my list is Unit 13. This is a very underrated game. Also, it's very unfortunately the developer was closed down right after the game release. That's why this game did not get a lot of positive attention. This is a third person shooting game. It contains 45 missions and you can do it whatever order you like. However, each mission has its own requirement for you to accomplish. Also, there are many different approach you can use. So this is the game if you are willing to dive into. It's definitely going to take you some time and meanwhile you will be really enjoy it. Number 4 is Killzone Mercenary. There's not much to say. This one is still considered best shooting game for PS Vita. The game has an outstanding graphic and you can see how much effort Sony put into it. Also, the game supports PS TV, and I highly recommend you to use PS TV play this game because it's way a lot easier to use controller than use PS Vita itself. Number three is Senran Kakura Shinobi vs. Currently, there are a couple Senran Kakura games have physical release on PS Vita. However, Shinobi vs. is PS Vita exclusive. This is an action game, like a hack and slash type. The reason I put this game in number 3 is because I like the game you don't really feel really overwhelmed by a lot of enemies unlike other hack slash type games and I think Siren Kakura they are always doing a very good job about it also the game has very unique close breaking system which you will get a lot of fun from it the problem for this game now is they only released this Let's Get a Physical Edition. So if you are looking to get a brand new copy now, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Even for pre-owned copy, it's around like $40 probably. So your best bet is go for digital. Number two is Persona 4 Golden P4G. This is probably again in most people's top five list and this is a JRPG originally was a PS2 game Persona 4 and for the golden one they add another character which means there will be additional story and while this game is so popular I think this is not just a typical JRPG you just go to a dungeon and uh, fight for monster and level up Persona 4 Golden offer you way more than that. You play as a high school student and your job is not only just in the level up and to fight the monster, you also need to spend time to develop a relationship with your classmate or people around you. Also you are trying to unlock some special event. So this is not just another traditional JRPG. I think that's why when people play it, they are just fall in love with it. I will say even though you don't like a JRPG, you are not a Japanese anime fans, I still highly recommend you to pick this one up because you might change your mind right after you play it. Before we look into number one, I have a couple of honorable mention here. So the first one is Persona 4 Dancing All Night. This is a Ryzen game. But don't worry about it, if you never play this type of game before, it's pretty easy. If you are a P4G fan, then I highly suggest you to try this one. I mean, most people will agree Persona 4 has one of the best soundtrack. And what they did for this game is they remix the soundtrack and add it into the game. By playing with this game, you will be really appreciate what the game provides. Also, this game has pretty good campaign story. Another one is Tear Away. I know this game is also released on PS4, but technically both games has totally different play experience. Something you see in the PS Vita edition, you will not see in PS4. The reason I put this one here is this is a considered a casual game. And I know a lot of female gamers like this type of game. And if you know someone play game casually and you want them to get into the PS Vita, 
this is definitely the first game you should recommend to those type of people. Now finally we have number one which is Call of Duty. Never mind. I know this joke is kinda of getting old. And I actually don't think this is a really bad game at all. So now we have a real number one here. Uncharted Golden Abyss. This is actually a launch title. I remember when the first time I watched the trailer, I cannot believe how beautiful this game is, especially on handheld. The game uses a lot of PS Vita's features like a touch screen, rear touchpad. Also the game has pretty good story, they still keep the sense of humor between dialogue like a regular Uncharted game. Also the story was taking place before Uncharted Trilogy on PS3. So if you are Uncharted fans, you never play this one, then you never complete the series. And to be honest, this is definitely one of my favorite PS Vita games. So I highly recommend people to play this one. These are my top 5 must play Vita games. So what other game you think Vita owners should play? Leave a comment below. And if you want to see my PS Vita collection, don't forget to check my 2016 Vita collection video in the end of this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more content in the future. And thank you for watching.